All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to prove the comparison test, which simply says that if you're smaller than a convergent series, then you must be convergent as well. So here's the first test. The second one will be very similar. So suppose you have a sequence of positive terms. So a n is bigger than zero for all n. And b n is less than or equal to a n. So here's your sequence a n, and here's your sequence b n. However, we would like to have a slightly stronger condition. So let's put absolute value of b n is less than or equal to a n. Then, if the bigger series converges, then the smaller series must converge as well. So, for instance, let's try to figure out whether the series of 1 over n squared plus 1 converges. Well, this is kind of like our bn, our smaller series. We know this is less than or equal to the sum of 1 over n squared, the bigger series. However, we know that this converges, because this is the 2 series, therefore the smaller series must converge as well. So again, if the bigger series converges, the smaller one must converge. And now let's prove this, because it's a nice application of the Cauchy criterion. So, a proof. Let epsilon be given. Now, since the series of an converges, we know that the tail of an is very small. So there is some threshold, capital N, such that if n is bigger than m, then bigger than that threshold, then the tail of a n is very small. So then the absolute value of the sum from m to n of a k is less than epsilon. However, remember those terms are greater than or equal to zero, so we can actually remove the absolute value because we're just taking the sum of positive terms. And then let's conclude something about the series of Bn. Then, with that same capital N, if uh, n is greater or equal to m is bigger than that threshold, then, well, let's see, S absolute value of the sum of Bn bk. Here you're taking the absolute value of a sum, so by the triangle inequality it's less or equal to the sum of the absolute values. But again, now remember that um, bn is less or equal to an. So this is less or equal to the sum from m to n of, again, ak. However, this is the tail of the series A, so we know this is small, again, by this assumption. Therefore, what have we shown? We've shown that for all epsilon, there is a threshold such that after that threshold, the tail of the series of Bn's is less than epsilon. So what does that mean? By definition, it just means that the series of Bn converges. And therefore, we're done. All right, and now let's move on. Let's prove some nice applications. Here's a nice application, if you want, of uh, the comparison test. Because remember, there's a notion of absolute convergence. So a series, a n, converges absolutely. Absolutely as in absolute value not like I agree with it, okay? That if 
the series of absolute value of an converges. For instance, take the series, let's say start from n to infinity of minus 1 to the n over n squared, which is minus 1 plus 1 fourth minus 1 9 plus 1 16. Then, if you take the worst case scenario, the sum from 1 to infinity of absolute value of minus 1 to the n over n squared, minus 1 to the n is plus or minus 1, so this just becomes the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared, and that converges, therefore this thing converges absolutely. And as an application, I now want to show that absolute convergence implies convergence. And that's not very hard to show because notice, uh, it's kind of silly. An is less than absolute value of An. So more precisely, if you take the absolute value of An, that's less or equal to the absolute value of an. But you see, because an is less or equal to absolute value of an, and we know the absolute values converge, so by assumption, assumption, the sum of absolute value of an converges, therefore the series itself converges as well by the comparison test. Because the bigger series converges, therefore the smaller series converge as well. And last but not least, I just want to prove a variation of the comparison test, which simply says if you're bigger than a series that goes to infinity, then you have to go to infinity as well. So if, let's say, Bn is greater than or equal to An, for all n, and the sum of a n is infinity, then the sum of b n is infinity as well. So again, if a n goes to infinity and b n is bigger than that, then b n goes to infinity, and the proof is super quick. So what is a series? It's a limit of partial sums. So let Sn just to be the partial sums of the An. So sum from k from 1 to n of Ak. By assumption, Ak is less or equal to Bk. So the sum from 1 to n of Ak is less or equal to the sum from 1 to n of Bk. And let's call this partial sum just Tn, the partial sums of the Bs. So what do we get? We get Sn is less than or equal to Tn. But by assumption, since the series of An goes to infinity, this limit is infinity. So by assumption, we know that Sn goes to infinity. Because again, the series of an is infinity. So, because tn is bigger than sn, we get that tn goes to infinity. But what does it mean for the partial sums of the b's to go to infinity? It means that the series of bn diverges. And therefore, we're done. All right, thank you very much.